Leadership, 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 success, success, success. Hi, my name is Jonathan Medina. I'm America's number one youth motivator. I'm your teacher. I'm your coach. I'm your friend and I'm your teammate. And today we're talking about leadership and success. Today we're talking about National Gear Up Week. I'm so excited to be with Region 12 Gear Up. I'm so excited to be with Gatesville. I'm so excited that Sarah Coker has invited me to come share a message with you guys. Normally, if I was speaking live, there'd be someone that would introduce me. They'd say things like, he's spoken to over a thousand schools nationwide at places such as Harvard, Texas A&M, University of Texas, and high schools from New York City all the way to Los Angeles. They might say things like, he's reached over a million people in live audiences, speaking to students, speaking to parents, speaking to educators. They, they usually say things like, he was a Georgetown University football player. I'm proud to say that I was a starter for two years. He's been featured on ESPN, NBC, ABC, Fox, and TED. This is a new one. He was a best, He's a best-selling author, which some of you guys are going to get to have autographed copies of my book. And then he, they're going to say, they're probably going to say that he broke the record at McDonald's for the most happy meals eaten in world one day go ahead and uh, when you see this type in the chat or, or, or write a comment and say uh, make a guess at how many burgers it took for me to to have that record no googling because it's unofficial it's not a real record um but i gotta tell you about this one time where i was getting ready to speak i'm pumped i'm backstage i do crazy things i'm start slapping myself in the chest i'm super pumped and excited and all of a sudden the person that's introducing me, they get super excited. So in this case, it would probably be Sarah Coker. And she'd be super excited. She'd be like, standing six foot four, weighing 300 pounds. And I was like, what? Um, I do not weigh 300 pounds anymore. That was my college playing weight. I got all the way up to 350 pounds. I was um, I started off, I was actually very, very small when I first got to college. I want you all to know that when I got to college, I was only 250 pounds. I was at one school. It was a National Gear Week, but years ago, and I was speaking, and there was one Hispanic girl in the audience, and it was a school assembly, and, and I, I told them about how I used to weigh 250 pounds. I, I was so small when I first got to college, and this little girl, she looks up, and she was like, Sir, 250 pounds? That's still gordo. And I didn't know what to say. I was nervous. It, it kind of caught me off guard. And all the other kids, they didn't know what she said. They were like, sir, sir, tell us what she said. And so I looked at all those kids in the audience they, that didn't speak Spanish. And I said, if you don't speak Spanish, gordo means strong. And that little girl, she looked up at me and she was like, uh-uh. And all the other kids were like, sir, sir, for real, for real, tell us what that means. And I said, fine. If you don't speak Spanish, gordo means smart. And that little girl went, uh-uh. And so all the kids were like screaming and screaming. And so I finally had to tell them, I said, fine. Gordo means. <laughs> One kid, st I, uh, I said, chubby. Husky. One kid stood up and was like, sir, fluffy. And I said, no, that's a comedian. But I bring that up because there was a time where I wasn't all these things. Like Just like I wasn't 300 pounds when I first got to college, I wasn't all of these things early on. I want to tell you guys about a lot more than just me. Today we're going to talk about other things because it, it's those, those are just things that I've done. But I want to talk to you guys today about how ninth grade changed my life. Everything was changing, um, how I had a personal pandemic at one point in my life. And then I want to share with you guys how... I'm going to give one person $100. So, and there's going to be a competition today. And the person who, if you have to stay all the way to the end, you have to comment. But I'm going to tell you guys about how you can win $100. So, one person's going to win $100 for participating extra, extra. And so, again, thank you. It's National Gear Up Week. It's Region 12 Education Service Center, the gear up there. And thank you, Ms. Sarah Coker, for inviting me. But today I want to talk about vision. I want to start off every everywhere I go. It doesn't matter whether I'm speaking to students, to staff, to parents. It doesn't matter whether I'm in New York or in Los Angeles or whether it's National Gear Up Week, hashtag National Gear Up Week. And so without a vision, students lose. It comes from uh, one of my favorite quotes. I, I altered it. And so um, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes, I read this book every single day. It says that without a vision, the people perish. And so I want you guys 
to think about vision. And so it's saying that without a vision, the people perish, but I'm going to change it. Without a vision, the students lose. 2020, um, a lot of people were calling it the year of vision. They were saying 2020 vision. Um, so any, if you wear glasses, anyone out there, um, you want to have 2020 vision. That means you have great vision. And so people were calling 2020 the year of vision. And then everything changed. There was a pandemic that hit. The economy started going down. Cl schools closed down. Um, the entire, like everything in the world shut down. And so for many people, it was like their eyes closed. They no longer had vision for 2020 anymore. I'm not sure if you've experienced this year being extra difficult. Uh, I personally, I, I lost my grandmother uh, because of COVID. She passed away. This year has been incredibly tough for a lot of people. But I want you to understand that 2020, we can't lose our vision. 2020, we cannot close our eyes. 2020, we can't close the eyes. We can close our eyes in our in our like our actual sight, but we can't close the eyes that we have in our heart. We can't close the eyes that we have in our mind. We have to continue to have a vision. So if you're if you're watching this and you want to comment, put vision in the comment. If you see this on Instagram or wherever it is that this all gets posted. I want you to write in the comments or I want you to write it down physically on a sheet of paper. I want you to write down vision. And then I want you to write down maybe 2024. So if you're a ninth grader right now, I want you to write down 2024. Like if you're going to go and what, what, what your vision is for when you graduate. Are you going to go to college? That's one of the things that I love about Gear Up is Gear Up helps you prepare for college and helps you to be college and career ready. So I'm expecting all of you to have a vision that... You're going to be college and career ready. So you're going to, I want you to write down what college you want to go to. I want to write, I want you to write down what you want to do after you graduate high school. Write down what your vision is. But there's like having a small vision, there's having a average vision, and then there's having big, huge vision. And so I want you to think about years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what kind of vision are you going to have? Are you going to have a vision about having an amazing career? Do you make a lot of money? Do you help people? Uh, are you in the medical field? Are you? Uh, do you have a YouTube channel that went crazy? Um, what kind of vision do you have for 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, do you have a family? Do they count on you to support them? Um, I want you to think about what that early on vision was like. So we're going to go through a little progression. I want you to quickly write down what you want. What do you, what do you think it's going to feel like when you graduate high school? I want that 20, uh, that, that shorter vision, that 2024 vision or that 2025, whatever it is, the age that you are when you graduate high school, I want you to write down what are, what is it going to feel like? What what are your parents going to, I want that, I want your imagination to run wild. What, what are you going to be wearing the black and gold? I, um, do, do they wear um, black gowns? What's that like when you graduate high school? Are you going to have, um, go straight into your college are you going to go like some kids go right right into summer they're already going to college and so you know write down what it is that you want to do with your vision i never forget that when i was a kid i remember i wanted to play uh football and so my short-term vision when i was in seventh grade i was like oh i want to make the a team i want to be an all-star i want to be a great player and so that was like my short-term vision and then I said, you know what, someday I want to be a varsity player. I, I want to be a great, great athlete. I want to go and excel at the highest level. And then I said, someday I'm going to go and play college football. I'm going to go to a prestigious university. No one in my family had ever gone to, to play those things. So some people thought that those visions were, my vision for myself was crazy. But I had that short-term goal. I had that little bit bigger goal. And then I had that ultimate goal that I was going to go and play college football. I wanted to go to prestigious school. I was going to be the first one in my family to graduate. So I had this vision of what I wanted to do with my life. I want you guys to write that down right now. Write down that vision. We're from Texas. So one of the things that Emmett Smith, one of the all-time great uh, Dallas Cowboys players, put, said is he wrote down his vision when he was in high school. Then he wrote down his vision for his career in college. Then he wrote down his vision for his career in the NFL. And they all came to pass. And he gives a lot of credit to a coach that told him to write down his vision. One of the reasons I absolutely love Gear Up is because of that very thing, the vision. I remember for me, that first, first, first college trip I took. 
just like um, I, I saw some of the images that had been posted about y'all's gear up i believe that some of you guys had got the privilege of going to texas a&m that was my very first college visit i remember being in seventh grade we got on a bus we drove all the way up to it's it's about a five hour drive all the way up to college station from where i'm at and we did that five hour drive getting off i remember seeing the big huge buildings i came from a rural area so we didn't have big huge buildings like that so i'm seeing the big huge buildings some are classrooms some are dorms we we took a drive by kyle field and I remember thinking, oh, someday I want to go to a big university like this. Someday I want to go and experience the college life. I could see the students walking in and out of classrooms or, or from their dorms. And I was so excited because I knew in that moment that someday I was going to be just like them. And one of the things that it took for me to get there is I had to learn to be my own hero. There were a lot of things that happened during my life where I could make an excuse. So... I shared some of the great things about um, the things that I've accomplished, but I didn't tell you guys earlier that my dad, I didn't meet him until I was in college. So my real dad, I never met him. He wasn't around in my life. He didn't see me um, be a high school student athlete. He didn't see me uh, compete in student organizations. He didn't. He wasn't a chaperone for any kind of event. He, he never saw any of that. My mom happened to not be there either. My mom was an absent mother because she got in trouble with the law, so she had to go to prison. And then my grandfather was a migrant field worker, so my grandfather, um, I would work with him in the fields, but pretty much all of his time he was sacrificing in order to take care of me because my mom and dad were not around. And so because of that, I had to learn to be my own hero. I could have easily made an excuse about how I had didn't have my dad around, and so I didn't have my dad to do the stuff for me. I could have made the excuse that when my mom got in trouble with the law that because of that, my mom wasn't around, so she couldn't help me. My grandfather didn't speak English very good, and he could not read English very good, so I had to do all the paperwork. I could have made the excuse that I didn't have someone, a guardian that, that understood and could help me through the application process. But instead, I had to learn to be my own hero. And so what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to think about how you can be your own hero. Not, not just relying on how you could have someone in your family help you. Not just relying on an older sibling. Not just relying on parents. But I want you to think about how your vision is up to you. I want you to think about how your vision is up to you for you to accomplish. If you want to go to college, that's up to you. If you want to have an amazing career, that's up to you. National Gear Up Week, it's Region 12, the ESC, other people at Gatesville, or they're going to help you. But I want you to think about how you are going to prepare yourself, even if they can't help you. One of the things that happened with me was I had counselors that did not believe in my vision. They did not believe in my goals. I told my counselor one day that I wanted to go to some of the most prestigious schools in the country. She looked at me and she told me that it was a waste of time. I, had, I actually went to an entire summer at this one camp and we had a college advisor there. And she told me that if I went to these colleges, I was not going to succeed. I could have had those moments, and, and, and I'll be honest, I went home and I cried, it hurt, and I couldn't believe that they weren't supporting me, but I had to make the decision that I was going to make it happen for myself. We have to be our own hero, and so I want you to think about being your own hero, and uh, real quick, I also want you to think about, um, just help me out, uh, are you Batman, are you Superman, Spider-Man, what is your favorite superhero, put that in a comment, um, write that out right now, post a picture, post a selfie, and... Um, you know, tag me in it. It's at J Medina Speaks. And so I wanted you to talk. I wanted to tell you guys about <clears throat> ninth grade. And so I'm getting ready. I'm pumped. I'm sad. I'm getting ready to go to the school. Um, I was visiting some friends in South Texas. I was actually living in Houston and visiting friends in South Texas. And my friends, they would all go and work out at the, and then we'd play, bas they would play basketball. And so they'd all, um, I was, I had made friends in the school or in my grandfather's town. And so, Sorry. So I made friends <clears throat> and we're, we're going, we're, we're going to work out. Um, I decide to, I want to get there early. And so um, we would run about one mile from my friend's home and we'd run over to the high school and I'm getting ready to work out. And right before I get there, there's a little tiny restaurant right outside the high school. And so I stop because I see that my grandfather's truck is parked outside the restaurant. And I think to myself, this is the moment that I'm going to get 
some candy. This is the moment that I'm going to get something sweet. This is the moment that I'm going to have something fun for myself. And so I start to go in and I'm thinking my grandfather is going to give me something great. And then all of a sudden what happened in that moment was my grandfather told me something. I'll never forget how sweat was coming down the side of my face. I'll never forget the feeling of, of being pumped and excited and thinking that I was going to get the sweet treat. And then my grandfather looks me in the eyes and he tells me, Mijo, I've been looking for you. Your mom just went to, your mom's going to jail and your mom's going to be in jail for a long time. And I remember even though my heart had, had been thumping and thumping and thumping from the run, my heart got slow, my eyes got watery. I'd been afraid of that moment for a long, long time. And that year, it felt like everything shut down on me. I was having to move schools. My family actually got split up, so I was no longer around all my brothers and siblings. Everything changed that year for me, and, and it seemed so hard. In fact, uh, I'm going to show you guys that this this is a, a pen that I have. I've, I've already used it uh, for another program, but I have a, this frying pan and it's sometimes it, it feels like like the world is just crashing down on us sometimes it can feel like 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 we're just you know it's just it's just so hard and, and um, I'm trying to, to bend this pan but because it's this strong metal it's difficult to do in the same way that that changing from being upset about 2020 to turning it into a positive can be very, very difficult. The same way it's hard for me to, to change this pan. I want you to think about how you can go and change this year, even though it's difficult and even though it's hard to, to mold it into and, and it. And it might end up looking completely different than you thought it was going to look. I want you to think about how you can change, just like I changed this frying pan. You know, it's no longer used for cooking eggs for breakfast. It's it's a tool that I use, but it's difficult to change it. And maybe you feel like this year it's difficult to change everything that's been going on. It's difficult to go from having um, been, you know, we, we've had our whole lives where we were learning online. It's been difficult for me. I, I've been, I normally go and I speak in live. I'm normally face to face with you, not not face to face on camera, but face to face in real life. And it's been difficult. Again, I, I lost a grandparent. So if any of you lost someone, I, I know exactly how that feels. But we have to somehow make 2020 to continue along our vision. We can't allow it to have the negative change. And so that year I, I went, my, my grandfather, he told, he told me this quote that ended up changing my life. My grandfather told me that in, in, in esta vida hay que luchar. And so if you don't speak Spanish, it means in this life you have to fight, you have to wrestle. The same way we have to be our own hero we have to fight and wrestle to go and do the positive things. We have to fight and wrestle to go and accomplish our dreams and goals. We have to fight and wrestle to change 2020, not from being the year of the pandemic, but maybe it's the year that you learned skills. Maybe it's the year that you learned to do something online. Maybe it's the year that you really took your time to go and visit a bunch of colleges digitally. This could be the year that you did so much different. Than other people a lot of a lot of people are going to choose to waste 2020 i want you to choose to make 2020 the best year you can make even if it's in a pandemic and so i, I told you guys that if you stayed on all the way to the end i was going to help you have an awesome national gear up week so I, I'm, I'm proud to tell you you heard all the wonderful things i actually did what i said i was going to do i i went on to have the vision i i went i was so happy to have gear up as a part of my high school so i got a tremendous support I became the hero, but at the end of the day, I was had my vision. Thanks to Gear Up, I had a vision that I was going to go to college. That college visit cemented in my mind, cemented in my heart, all the way deep down inside that I was going to go to college. I was going to have a career. I was not going to be like my mom who had gone to prison. I was not going to be like my dad who was an absent father and he didn't even graduate high school. I was not going to be my grandfather who only made it to the third grade, even though back then there was much harder circumstances for him. I was going to have a career. I was going to be the first one in my family to go to college. I was going to be the change. 
And so this year, I want you to know that National Gear Up Week, or I'm sorry, this is the year that Gear Up absolutely does work. 2020 is not the year of shutting down the vision. This is the year to accelerate the vision. This is the year to be your own hero. So I want you to, to do is for $100, I'm going to post all these videos. I'm going to post it on the chat. I'm going to post that on my Instagram. So if you would go to my Instagram and put Jay Medina Speaks, I think I explained it more right here at the bottom. And so what I want you to do is I want you to go to my Instagram. It's at Jay Medina Speaks. What you're going to do is you are going to tag. So if you see it right here, um, ED Partnerships, you're going to tag ED Partnerships. Last year, some of the school assemblies that I did, um, we got featured on the National Gear Up Instagram. So what I want you to do is I want you to tag ED Partnerships, to tag me in a, in a in a comment or any picture that you post. And then I want you to be sure to hashtag Gear Up Works, hashtag National Gear Up Week. Again, without a vision, the students lose. So I want you to have that vision that this is gonna be the year, 2020 is the year that you go and you advance into being college and career ready. This is the year that you are gonna be your own hero, just like Ms. Coker said. And so I wanna thank um, Sarah Coker for having me here. I wanna thank Dr. Sanderson. I wanna thank Sheila Anderson. Um, I wanna thank Gear Up for changing my life. Students, I believe that you guys are our champions don't forget it's game time so it's national gear up week gear up works uh tag at jamie news speaks and ed partnerships and i'm trying to give one of you guys 100 so thank you guys so much it's been an honor and a pleasure and i hope to see you guys sometime soon again tag me follow me um i'm gonna give you guys 100 and don't forget to hashtag national gear up week hashtag gear up works thank you guys so much it's been an honor and a pleasure bye bye